house on the market. And we had some home improvements that we had to do beforehand to get it ready for that. Um, there's a piece of property, some acreage that we are trying to buy. We have to sell our house first. So, lots of stuff going on, lots of stressful things and noise. No time to do any recordings or anything. But, as of Sunday, the house is listed. And pictures are taken. And so, um, most of the work is finished. Except for, the, you know, the work that I can't do on my own. Like the roofing and the siding and things like that. So, it's quiet. Finally, a little. Except for our neighbors. And it's clean. It's very relaxing. Um, it's been very, very, very chaotic. We had the dresser in the kitchen. We had a bathroom vanity and a toilet sitting in the living room for about a week. Um, and just everything was everywhere. <laughs> so it's been very crazy. So um, there's been a couple of projects that I've had going on. Um, aside from all of that home project, things that I wanted to get to. And um, these are a couple of them. I've got some black beans there that I picked up this morning, and I've got a silk scarf that I've been working on. My kitty cat says good morning. Good morning! So this is a silk scarf. This is the Habitai silk. And then this is cotton gauze. As you can see, there's still pins in it because I have like one more seam to finish. But it's going to be an infinity scarf. This is silk velvet. Which I didn't know that such a thing even existed and it totally blew my mind. Um, the, the actual um, the nap, I guess you would call it, the pile, the, the velvety part is uh, rayon, I think. But the backing is silk, and so, you know, usually when you get a velvet, the back fabric is like polyester and doesn't feel very nice against your skin. This feels amazing. <laughs> and so, these fabrics here, this one, and this one, and this one, I all dyed with black beans, actually. Um, found out about it on the internet and I thought it was really cool, so I gave it a go, and this is what happened. So you go from this, and you soak the beans, um, just in cold water or whatever, soak them for a day or two, and then you drain off the water into a jar and that's your dye bath, and then the really great part about it is then you can eat the beans. <laughs> So, and then you just prepare your fabric for dyeing, and you put it into the, the jar and leave it as long as you can stand it. This was about a day. And this is what it looks like. This is hand-woven cotton gauze. It's not hand-woven by me. I bought it from a really lovely company online that sells supplies and stuff. Um, Dharma Trading always done me really well and they have really good good fabrics and so you can see like, kind of the variations in the fabric itself and little variations in the color like these ridges here look a little bit brown and this is a clear blue and then because I really liked that that raw edge. I stitched it with a silk yarn and just ran it through there. Again with this same thing, silk yarn. And then these parts are just cotton muslin that I, I wanted to try and see how rust printing would work. 
which is um, where you take just your fabric and you you make a contact print with rusty things. These, all of these in particular, I believe, were just big rusty nails. And you wrap it around the, the rusty thing and tie it down with string, which is what gives you these really beautiful light marks all through there. And so, like I said, this is just cotton muslin. I snipped it on the edges and ripped a big strip so it's like ribbon. These I also treated with um, like a really strong black tea solution. And it interacts with the rust and gives you this really great silvery black color. really cool variations in the colors. And like I said, this is going to be an infinity scarf, so it'll just be this really luxurious thing to wear. This silk is so very light. And the cotton and the velvet give it a little bit of weight and some That drapey, luxurious feeling. And here's just my sewing box that I've got going on at the moment. Big ball of raw silk yarn. My hair is still kicking on because it is cold again here in Minnesota. Here's a little piece of that silk yarn that I used. Let's see if my camera will zoom in on that. So you can see it's just so shiny. So, yeah, I have all these little bits of threads and things. These were the extra threads that I pulled off of that cotton gauze to make it straight and even. Maybe if I come over here it'll do a little better. It's a little better. <laughs> anyway, again you can just see the lovely like, color variations really subtle. Here's a couple more of those ribbons. I just think it's really fascinating. I I haven't been able to stop playing with this particular technique since I learned about it, like the rust printing and the natural dyes. This one turned out really pretty, almost like um, like those marbled pages on the inside of the old books, you know? That's what it reminds me of. And this one's just really nice and bright with good, a good print on it. Anyway, I wanted to show you just some of the fun things I've been working on. I'm going to be upcycling a skirt that I found at the thrift shop. My daughter is pregnant and she needs like loose and lovely flowy things, so I'm going to... I found this skirt. It's just a cotton, like, broomstick skirt, and um, it's pure white. And I know that <laughs> she's not a big fan of just wearing really white clothes, so we like to play outside and get dirty and stuff. So here's the little sketch that I kind of did. Kind of 
kind of a road map for what I think I want to do. She really likes striped things, so I'm going to try to do some stripes with some of the things that I've got. And so for this section here, turns out there's actually five sections on the skirt, so I'll have to re-evaluate a little bit. But for this technique here, what I'm going to do is take these black beans and do a shibori style tie and try to get a, like a contact print instead of making a dye bath with them just try for a contact print so what I'm hoping is that I will get these really lovely like bright purpley blue dots that I can you know line up on the fabric and make her stripes that she likes and you know on the drawing of course they're really big dots but on the skirt itself they'll be little little bitty dots So for this part here, I'm going to lay, um, lay the rusty screws or the nails onto there in the stripes and then kind of accordion fold it so we get that nice um, stripey look, hopefully. And then down here at the bottom, I hope to find some, <coughs> excuse me, maybe some rose leaves or something. Um, it is very, very, very early spring in Minnesota, and it looks a lot greener out there than it really is. It's it's not there yet. <laughs> and we're supposed to get some snow later this week. Not much, but, you know, not spring weather either. So hopefully do some leaf prints on this section down here, and just some rusty bits up here. I'll have pictures of it up on my Facebook artist page after I get it done. But this morning, the reason I really wanted to make this video is this morning I went to the store and bought a bag of black beans so I can get started on this. And I think the sounds here are just really lovely. Give it a sticky finger. They kind of look like little blueberries in there. When we stopped at the store this morning, this was the only thing that I purchased, and um, my husband was driving, and so all the way home, I didn't even have it in a bag, I just had it sitting on my lap, and I realized that I was ASMRing myself. Like, I've always really loved the feeling of bean bags. I had a set of bean bags when I was a little girl, like just little cotton bean bags. 
that had real beans in them. And some of my little toys had real beans in them when I was little. I've always been so intrigued by that feeling of all those little bitty things under the surface like that. And they make up you know, one thing. But there are all these little things inside there. I make the skirt, what I'll do is I'll take the skirt and kind of lay it out and then I'll put one bean underneath the fabric and pull it up like this and tie it around with a string just underneath the bean. And I'll do those in rows all in one tier of that skirt. And it should make a nice purpley blue polka dot there. So I also brought out a little dish. The scissor. And we'll see if I can manage to do this one-handed here. It's one of my favorite sounds. Just the little beans in the dish. Cut a little corner off and we'll put some beans in the dish. And I just always really have enjoyed that feeling of like sticking your fingers down in the like, bulk bins, you know, like or a bag of rice. Or beans. Beans work too. Hopefully this won't be loud.
or something. So yeah, basically just wanted to let everybody know that I'm still seeing comments. I am still seeing your lovely subscribing and all of that. And that I, I'm still here. <laughs> I haven't fallen off the face of the earth. I've just been so insanely busy. I haven't had any time to, to make videos.
I hope you enjoyed this and I hope to be able to make some more videos for you throughout the summer. spring everybody